Oh, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving elite code problem number 46, permutations. Given an array of nums of distinct integers, return all of the possible permutations. You can return the answer in any order. So let's now look at our example 1, 2, 3. And remember that permutations are just the ways that we can rearrange these numbers um, using you know, the numbers that we have available. So the easiest permutation we can make is actually to do nothing, right? Which is just the original input which is going to be one, two, three. So if we fix this one, what other permutation could we make? Well, we can swap the two and the three. So we could also get one, three, two. And what if we now put the two first? Well, we could have two, one, three. And then we could also swap the one and the three to get another distinct permutation, two, three, one. Now, if we have the three first, we could do three, one, two, and then we could also swap the one and the two, and we would get uh, three, two, one. So these are going to be all of our uh, permutations that we can actually build here. Now, what we want to do here is, like you saw, we basically put one of the numbers at the front, swapped it with whatever is at the current front, and then we can just swap around the elements um, in here, right? It's essentially what we've done, right? We've fixed one element in the beginning, ensuring that it's unique each time. And then we simply just swap the other elements for as many elements as there are, right? So there's two elements here, so that way we had to do two swaps. And that's the general intuition behind the algorithm. You wanna fix one of the elements at the front and then just swap the other ones. And then obviously you need to change which one gets fixed at the front to generate all the permutations. And the way that we're actually gonna do this is using the backtracking formula. Uh, because that way uh, we can fully explore all of the ones, then swap the two, and then do the twos, and then do the threes. And this is a perfect backtracking formula. So let's now actually go to the code editor and type this up. You'll see that it's going to follow a very familiar pattern for backtracking. Uh, and it's very similar to how we would do the combinations problem, which is, I guess, the cousin of this one, except now you're doing permutations and it's slightly different, but the algorithm is essentially the same. So let's go to the code editor and type it up. So we're back in the code editor, let's type this up. The first thing that we want to do is actually define our output results. So we're going to say res, it's just going to be an empty list. Whoops. And now what we want to do is we want to essentially define our backtracking function, which is going to perform uh, the logic here. So let's say def backtrack. And this is going to take basically uh, our current index position. So we know um, which one we're at. So we can basically swap things accordingly. So we're going to say cur index, and this is going to start uh, at zero. Um, so we take our cur index. And what we're going to do now is if the current index uh, actually equals to the length of nums, then we know that we've actually exhausted all of the numbers um, because we'll be moving our current index to indicate which number we need to swap, right? So say we have like one, two, three. Um, if the current index is at pointing at the two, that means that we need to swap the two uh, with the front. So that way the two will now be fixed and then we need to swap the one and the three around. Similarly, when the index points at three, that's the one that needs to get fixed at the front. And then we're simply going to, um, you know, move the other ones around. So what we want to do is uh, if we've actually exhausted the entire list, uh, then we need to basically just, um, you know, add it to our solution. So we're going to say uh, res the append. So we're actually going to be moving things around in nums. So we're just going to make a copy of nums, right? Um, so we're just going to you know, take all of the numbers from nums from the beginning to the end, uh, and then we're good to go. So we're just basically going to make a copy of it and add it to our result. All right, now what we want to do is uh, remember that we need to go through um, from left to right from basically current index to the end, and then make all of those swaps. So we're going to say for i in range from the current index to whatever the length of nums is, we want to swap some things around. So we're going to say nums of our current index, and we want to swap it with whatever uh, nums of i is, right? So we're going to be swapping uh, the current index uh, with the other indexes. Um, so that way we can fix current index at the front, and then we're good to go. So uh, we're going to say nums of first, uh, nums of i is going to equal to nums of i and nums of first, right? So these will basically just swap the values at the current, in uh, not first, sorry, uh, current index. 
um, we'll basically be swapping what are the values at current index and I, um, so that way we can rotate things around and basically generate the permutation. Now that we move things around, we need to call our backtrack function. And remember, we need to move our current index up by one. And once that runs, it will go to completion, uh, at which point, actually, we can uh, return here. Um, and then what we want to do is undo the swap that we did, right? So we just need to undo it because when you do backtracking, typically you uh, make some sort of change to the, you know, the order. You, you fully explore that path with the change and then you undo it so that way the next one um, won't have its orders messed up. So we're gonna say nums of the current index. So we basically just wanna undo the swap. So we're just gonna do the exact swap and this will undo it, right? So nums of i and uh, nums of the current index, right? And that's really all you need to do for the backtracking function. Um, we just wanna call backtrack and obviously we're gonna be starting at the zeroth index because that's the beginning of our nums. And we will call backtrack at the end of which all we wanna do is simply return our results. So let's just make sure we haven't made any silly syntax mistakes here and run this and it looks good to go. So let us submit this and accept it. So cool. Uh, now that we see that it works, let us now think about the time and space complexity here. So obviously we need to generate all of the permutations and for each of the permutations, remember that we need to basically make a copy of whatever the current ordering of nums is, because that kind of represents, um, you know, the current state of the permutation, right? We're going to be modifying uh, nums, moving it around. Uh, and then when we get to this stage where we actually need to add it to our result, copying that, uh, we know that it's going to take big O of n time to copy it. And how many times are we going to have to make the copy? Well, it's going to be however many permutations there are. And if you remember the permutations formula, which is like n, p, k, right? So you have n items and you want to permute it uh, in k ways. Um, basically, if you remember the formula from math, if you don't, don't worry. It's actually n factorial uh, divided by um, n minus k factorial. So that is going to be your overall time complexity. The big O of n is actually, you know, adding your result here because you need to make a copy. And this is the number of permutations that you're going to generate. So um, let's see for the space complexity, we basically just need to store uh, the elements, right? So how many results elements are we going to be storing? Well, it's going to be the number of permutations. So again, that's n factorial over uh, n minus k uh, factorial, which is basically just our factorial formula here, right? Where n is the number of elements in nums, and k is actually the size of, um, you know, how, however many, uh, how, how large you want the permutation to be. So there you go. Um, that is the time and space complexity uh, of this algorithm. Hopefully that makes sense and you guys can see how the uh, backtracking formula is. I mean, it's really this simple uh, template here, right? You basically just iterating forward through your numbers that you want to backtrack over. Um, you do some sort of operation, then call backtrack and then undo that operation. So then you can continue. So very common um, template here for backtracking. And yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. If you want to join a Discord community where we talk about all things Fang, then I'll leave a link in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.